Hello, hello, hello team. I just thought I'd get on live five minutes before we actually start so people have a chance to get on and say hey. Because uh, God knows we all need a little bit of company right now. And that's what I'm here for. A little bit of company. And to show you guys some Shakespeare that I've been doing. <laughs> so for those who uh, aren't in the know, uh, I Hi, I'm Katie Boyle. I'm one half of Sparrow and Boyle Entertainment. And me and my artistic partner, Alexander Sparrow, last year we did two New Zealand tours of this version of The Merry Wives of Windsor that I'm about to do, just a reading of today. And it is a solo version, so I play everyone. There's about 13 different characters, and it's lots of fun, lots of, like, running around it's an hour and a half of cardio for me which is so nice that I just get to sit down in my caravan today and just do the facials and voices and, and like have some fun with it this is gonna be really great uh, I also am looking forward to just having a chat with people about some Shakespeare and what we're doing at the moment and we've been super busy at the moment which has been really really cool during this time heaps of people have been putting up opportunities to be performing and creating art during this lockdown period, which has been so cool. Uh, like all the, L Lyndon Hood has been doing some surreptitiously Shakespeare and doing some live readings. Um, uh, Anya Artstyle has been doing a, a performance and I think it's just about uh, finished now, of, um, uh, Inside the Verona Walls or Verona Walls. It's so good. Definitely go and see it. And also the New Zealand police have been uploading their uh, Creative Genius series, which has been hilarious. And it's been so great to be a part of that. We made a post uh, that included Pat Goldsack and Fred from Featherston, two of our characters. And our video got about 60.9 thousand views. And it's been heaps of fun. So luckily everyone's been really, really happy about that. Well, not really, really happy, but, you know, tuning up and making some awesome work together, which has been really, really cool. And especially since we've been a part of it, we've been doing some play, silly play readings with some friends, and it's just been really chill, really cool. It's been a nice, it's been a nice time, and I think we all just need to have some nice time. Uh, I'm preparing for the play, so right now I've got uh, a little mug of tea, or pot of tea brewing right now it's cranberry and apple or crapple as I like to call it um, bright pink which is gorgeous and it smells delicious and it's extremely hot so I have a feeling I'm gonna have to just let that cool down for a little bit but uh, yeah so this is the version of the play that last year we toured around New Zealand I performed this about 40 seven times i think we were just shy of doing it 50 times in the one year yeah crap we'll do. <laughs> thanks kid <laughs> uh and so it's quite it's quite funny doing the same play over and over and over again and i'm sure um his performers understand this you start to do it on autopilot which is so funny when you catch yourself doing things on stage you become outside of yourself for a minute and you end up like participating as an audience member a little bit, watching yourself perform. And every now and again, your body will do something on autopilot and suddenly, you know, you find yourself saying something ridiculous out loud and you're going, why did she say that? And then you go, oh yeah, that's right. It's you who's saying that right now. You should like get in your, get your head in the game. So it was quite funny experiencing that a couple of times on the tour of being like, that line doesn't sound right because it's like the 30th time that you've done the play and you're like, oh yeah, that's because I'm not paying attention right now. So for this script reading, I'm going to be reading off the actual script, <laughs> which is going to be great. <laughs> for the first time since uh, like March last year, I'll actually be looking at the script, which is really cool. Uh, so I'm going to bring it up. Oh gosh, so exciting. Wow. So if you have a version of the script, bring it up. By all means, bring it up because it'll be cool to see 
and just a hey abby how you doing hi uh it's cool to see the vision of this script because we have taken away uh the slot of the end page love line uh because what we found was really interesting was full stuff in the two women the merry the merry wives of windsor uh the people who are already married also it means that uh we had a much more acceptable 13 characters rather than 18 or something like that and we also uh cut the play down to an hour and a half which was great for me that's great for me all right that was one of the reasons why we chose this close to this play but otherwise uh we just really really like this play it's super funny it's just all fast which is great who doesn't love a comedy just pure comedy i love that so awesome all right <laughs> that's the first half <laughs> at this point i've been running around the stage and i'm super sweaty <laughs> and i go backstage and i lie on the floor with a drink bottle <laughs> So, thank you so much. That's the first half of The Merry Wives of Windsor. That's just one half of the two halves. The whole play is an hour and a half long. So, we're going to have five minutes. I'm going to have some tea and some water and say hey to some people. Also, if you have any questions about anything at all, uh, I've got a couple that I'll answer now and hopefully they'll answer some of yours as well. And also, of course, during this time, we're not able to go on the road and we're not able to go out and do anything at the moment. So we would love any contributions that you have that you can make through to us. We have a Patreon page, head there. There is, uh, I'll comment it in the links below. Wow, technology. There's our Patreon page. It's also in the um, description of this live video. And also you could, if you really wanted to, and we would love it if you did make uh, some direct payments to us, Sparrow and Boyle Entertainment. Sparrow and Boyle Entertainment. And I'll list our bank account details. It's so weird doing this. It's like, I don't know. This is a crazy time. This is so weird. Why am I doing Shakespeare in a caravan? <laughs> This has never happened to me before. Uh, there we go. There's our bank uh, details. We would love it if you just have five bucks, ten bucks that you have going spare. Um, so we can keep on making content like this. It's so fun. This is so great. I've never been less sweaty doing this show. <laughs> at all. Man. <clears throat> so I have a, a couple of uh, questions that I can answer right now. But first, I want to say some thank yous. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So, first of all, huge thank you to Carol. She's a beautiful neighbour of ours, and uh, she's been uh, giving us, she's given us a donation. So lovely. Thank you, Karen, of um, from Monganui. Again, another donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your um, uh, your time and your energy and your love and everything. And also Sasha, our patron. Hey, Sasha, thank you so much for joining us. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, also, thank you to New Zealand Police for sharing our video with Pat and Fred. It's on 60.9, but 61,000 views. And that is wild. That is so cool for us, for two people who are tiny, as tiny as we are. It's been so awesome. So, again, follow us on Patreon. Follow us on Patreon. We would love for you guys to join us. And also, um, if you want to throw us a little uh, payment, we're not a charity. If you have uh, some money going spare, we would love for uh, your your help. This has been great. So, I have a couple of questions. If you have any, type them in the comments because I've got the comments going now. Uh, so, I'm going to say hi to Kat Chirona. Hi, Kat. Hi, Abby. Thank you, Ryan. Hi. <laughs> hi, Kate. Hi, Mum. Hello, Kerry Boyle. Hi, Mum. Hi Charmaine as well, and hi Chris O'Grady. Chris O'Grady is the OG, well my OG, Master Ford. So if my Master Ford seems a little bit like Chris O'Grady, it's probably why. <laughs> that was my inspiration. His back, back, hi, I want you. Back. <laughs> All that is just because Chris O'Grady's performance was awesome. Um, so that actually leads into how, why we chose this play 
over some of the other Shakespeare's as our first one to take on tour. Um, one, we really wanted to take a comedy. It's so nice going around and doing something that's fun, that makes you laugh. Also, it's got great opportunity to do some really intense character comedy, some physical character comedy, obviously not right now, but um, to work with voice and changing character through voice and also um, doing a wild facial expressions. You're welcome, Chris. <clears throat> and this play just happens to have no really intense, really intense drama. I think it's one of one of Shakespeare's uh, very few plays that no one dies. Wow, amazing. Um, and it's just lots of poking fun at people who are not that nice and what well, well, one person who's not that nice and in the end they end up being friends anyway it's just it's a nice play <laughs> which is different to going around and 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 drawing on sometimes some bad emotions when you're on stage and stuff so this is just a great opportunity to have a lot of fun on tour and also doing check there which i i, I love this era of language gorgeous um Another reason we did this awesome production, me and Alexander, one of the first plays that we were in together, I think the first play we were in together at all, was Stagecraft's The Merry Wives of Windsor, which is how I know Chris O'Grady. <clears throat> well, we know each other from the Crucible, but uh, we had the absolute pleasure of working with um, an awesome cast and an um, awesome director in that, Ewan Coleman. And we had so much fun doing that play. I was Mistress Quickly, so just Mistress Quickly. Alexander was Dr. Caius, who unfortunately we had to uh, cut from the play because he's part of the Anne Page subplot, which we also removed from the play. And it was so fun. Absolutely, like, so, so, so much fun. Um, corsets, like, sucking the baubles up to your neck and um, silly hats and big pantaloons and fluffy sleeves. and So cool. So it was heaps of fun during that play. Uh, which made me fall in love with it in the first place. Also, Falstaff, what an amazing, like, why wouldn't I want to play Falstaff? I want to play an old, fat, drunken dude who tries to seduce two women to get the purses of their husbands. Yes, please. So I thought that'd be a great idea to do that play. I know it inside out. It's so much fun. No, already got some amazing memories from doing it the first time around, and I'm going to try and do it by myself this time. <laughs> so we thought we'd do that. <clears throat> Touring this play, though, was awesome and continues to be amazing. We tour, uh, we take along this caravan right now, set up as a little fairy grotto. But it's just, it's a small little caravan and it's so great because we get to go all around New Zealand. We, we did with this play, we went all around New Zealand and met some incredible people. A lot of amazing audience members who were coming out taking a risk on people they've never met and never heard of because we're just a really new, really small company. We'd go around, hang out with these awesome audience members after the shows would come along and uh, they would tell us, you know, like, come hang out with us. Like, next time you're around, we'll put you up and stuff. And it's so great when you go around on tour to meet people who are so hospitable like that. It means so much for small theatre practitioners like us when people are willing to put in the time and put in the energy to go out of their way to make sure that if they enjoy your stuff that they tell you. I don't know. It's it's like it's hard slog and when you go around and doing doing this, you know, sometimes it's a thankful uh, thankless task, <clears throat> but it's so much fun doing it. And then what but what makes it, of course, the best is, is when you've got beautiful people who come along and become part of the performance with you when they're enjoying themselves so much. And then, of course, the venue managers and, and, and the theatre managers that we go to all around New Zealand are like second homes for us now. Oh, that, yeah, there, there are too many to say thank you to, to all, all around New Zealand, but it's we miss being with you. Heats, both me and Alan I'm absolutely positive that I can say on behalf of him that we miss going to your venues because they feel like home to us. So we can't wait to start getting on the road again. And of course, once this is awesome that this is happening right now that we're able to do theatre like this now. But I can't, 
can't wait to do this in front of people again because <laughs> I really want to like I want to go to the Dunedin and Nimbicargill and Methven I want to go to Methven again <laughs> come on <laughs> but yes it's been it's been so cool again quick thank yous to Carol Karen Sasha and Abby thank you Abby thank you so 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 much for um joining up on our Patreon thank you oh so wonderful again join us on patreon our bank details are on the link and also now i think we have to get into the second act and the second act i need to set up just a couple of things and for those who uh follow some of our other work and who've seen the police videos i think you'll be pleasantly surprised with uh, a guest appearance from someone i think you'll like it a lot oh no what have i done oh gosh oh, no. okay wonderful Also, huge thank you to Russell Boyle, my father, who I'm living with right now. 10 out of 10, veggie soup is on fleek. Thanks, Dad. Okay. <clears throat> who doesn't love um, self-isolating with their family? I love it. Because I get to eat Russell Boyle veggie soup all day, every day. It's what I want. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. That is the end of the play. Woo! Oh, God. I might as well just take my hair out. Ah, that'll do. I mean, it looks great. I mean, why not? That once happened. Okay. It's question time. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you, Abby. Thank you so much for your round of applause. And thank you guys for tuning in to watch One Trick. Ah, do a beautiful rendition of the Merry Wives of Windsor. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, I'm going to stick around for like 20 minutes and chill while I uh, cool down because suddenly it got rather hot in here, which is lovely. Ah. Oh. And uh, I'm going to finish my cup of tea and chill. Again, join us on Patreon. Our bank account details are there if you would like to uh, spend a penny <clears throat> and uh, give Master Page, no, Master Ford, oh God, give Master Ford his, um, uh, his 20. Uh, that was heaps of fun. Man, that was heaps of fun. So, a couple of details first. Again, thank you so much for our supporters and our Patreon members and those who watch the show. Uh, we are doing another one of these next week, same time, Saturday, 3 p.m. It's not going to be me. Oh, my God. It's going to be Alexander Sparrow, the other half of this team. He is doing his one-man rendition of the Much Ado About Nothing. It's amazing. It's got my favorite character in it, Beatrice, and his interpretation of Beatrice is hilarious. So good. So watch that. It's pretty much the same length. It's about an hour, hour tw uh, 15 with an interval. It's going to be so much fun. <clears throat> I want to say thank you. Thank you so much, Kat. Uh, tell us the best thing about being on tour. Oh, very cool question. The best thing about being on tour was getting to see the country, to be honest. For me, at least. I mean, obviously, there's the uh, – he sure does Don Pedro. I'll get to you in a minute, Chris. He does these, like, <clears throat> the best thing about being on tour is going around and seeing the country. And, of course, it's like going around to places and having the opportunity to perform to, you know, from four people to potentially 100 people at a time and getting paid to do what you absolutely adore. But my favorite part of being on tour was actually going around hanging out in a caravan and seeing some amazing sights around New Zealand I barely got to travel beforehand and the only time I do get to travel was always because of um other things like fencing I I do some sword fighting as well and every now and again I'll have a competition in Christchurch or Dunedin or something so I would only ever travel if I had a fencing gig and so or or another theater gig 
<clears throat> so I'd always go to the place, go to the venue, do what I wherever I need to do there, and then I would go back home again. But this time, there were days where we just have to travel, and we ended up in places like Tianao, um, and there was other places like Methin, and I think Methin was the people in Methin were amazing because it's such a small and so out of the way, so out of the way compared to like the normal tricks that you do. But for us, it was like totally worth it because the people there were great. <clears throat> and of course, you know, you'll end up uh, doing some off-site, like off the grid camping in your caravan and the, you know, in the, in the caravan spots that they've got listed on those websites. And you'll find yourself on a, a cliff face in Timaru where when you wake up and you undo the blind and it's a sunrise on a cliff like i think it's that giving yourself the opportunity to travel around this country is like not many people get to do that and it was wonderful that we got to do that on tour <clears throat> yeah i think that was definitely my favorite and going around roads there were some crazy roads that we went on like lindis and lewis and arthur's pass terrifying towing a caravan <laughs> probably shouldn't have done it but we did it and we did it in the winter and that was scary but now i feel like i can do anything i feel very mortal and very powerful at the same time from surviving those roads um but that was the best thing about being on tour was waking up in a different town like every day and getting to go around and see what small town new zealand had and also the people in those towns being really welcoming and appreciative of us going out of our way to go and visit those towns because they don't get a lot of you know visitors there so go to your small towns man and we love it we love it and they love it too again another thank you carol karen sasha abby and if people have made direct deposits as well thank you as well um does he do don pedro chris he sure does he sure does and I can't wait for you to see Alexander's Don Pedro. He does a fantastic dogberry. Again, for those who have seen some other shows and the characters that we've created, um, you might notice some very familiar voices and characteristics in, um, in Alexander's dogberry. But I won't ruin it. You have to watch it. It's so good. Um, and uh, of course his his Beatrice is lovely and his Benedict is just great what was your favorite small town venue Chris you played on Beatrice oh awesome fantastic oh mate you're gonna love it it's gonna be great you're gonna love it uh, yeah much ado is one of my favorite one of my favorite plays much ado and Merchant of Venice are my two favorite plays because of the lead females in that because they're just boss they're boss bitches and I just they're so great. I just want, I want to be Beatrice and I want to be Porter again. It's so fun. <clears throat> Favorite small town venue? Um, there are a couple. Uh, Methvin was awesome. The, 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 um, the, they've got this like, um, oh my god, what do you call it? It's Mount Hutt Memorial Hall. And it's one of the only like venue venues that they've got there. But they've got the main playing space, which uh, my father, when he goes on tour, because he's part of the Air Force band, he goes and plays in the large venue, which holds hundreds of people because it's like a ski, it's a ski town. But we go and we perform in this tiny little um, off side. Uh, <laughs> it's like a, you host presentations in there. <laughs> it's more of like a presentation room. It's like meetings and that sort of thing. So it's really low key. Looks like you've stumbled into someone's meeting. Um, seats like 50 people, tops, 70 people you can smash in there probably. Um, no lighting, super simple. But it's, to me, it's one of my favorite venues because the drive, thank you, Chris, so much for coming and watching. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Uh, the drive to Methvin is beautiful. You've got this amazing mountain in front of you, this whole time and then you get there and you've got <clears throat> like three pubs 
instead of there, we've got the brown pub, the blue pub, and I think there's one called the white pub. And we've just named that. Yeah, they just call it that. The brown, the blue, and the white pub. And uh, yeah, the people who come along, like the the people who run the newspapers there, and the people who come along and watch the art there. Amazing. Um, <clears throat> gore as well. Gore is fantastic. Gore Little Theatre is an old school that uh, when they, they moved the school out and Gore Repertory Society moved in, they did up the school. Now, instead of multiple classrooms, they made a huge hall and they've got an awesome raked stage and a lighting box up the back. It's really like old school, easy to work with lighting fixtures and things. And the stage itself, it's got this awesome green room around the back. And in the green room, your green room is the old principal's office and the administration office. So you've got a fireplace in there that's kind of like done up. And on the walls, you've got all these amazing posters of the old shows that they've done. And uh, in multiple other uh, side rooms that used to be classrooms are now like ballet studios and other classrooms to do like drama performances and all this kind of stuff. It's such a, the history of that place is awesome. And you just think walking around like, oh, you can see where there used to be a wall and what, how they used to set up the classrooms in there. And also Gore is an awesome place to be in. It's so nice. Um, and we we love like um, the, uh, Vicky <coughs> from Gore. We miss that place so much. So many beautiful dogs and cat memories. So lovely. But yes, Gore, another beautiful small town. Heaps of... Um, yeah places down south because we went to a lot of um, places down south with the small towns yeah i think those two would be my my favorite one because of like the landscape and then the other because of the history of the actual venue amazing oh man um there's another question uh oh just by the way you can find out more about us Got our Facebook page, Sparrow and Boyle Entertainment. We've got our website, www.sparrowandboyle.com. Uh, we've got our Patreon, Patreon forward slash Sparrow and Boyle. We've got our Instagram at Sparrow and Boyle. Am I missing anything? YouTube. Look up Sparrow and Boyle Entertainment. We're on YouTube as well, and I'll put all those links in the link of this video when this has stopped going live. Cat, which Shakespeare character would you bonk and why? <laughs> Benedict. And Bassanio. Because. Because I want to be the the opposing characters in real life. I want to be Beatrice and I want to be Portia. So in turn I would bonk Benedict. Because I think wit is something that you don't find in um, <clears throat> like sharp tongue sharp fast witty tongue love that for me i think that's fantastic one way to get me into bed is a sharp witty tongue but also bassanio because that love story is really nice it's really nice portia and bassanio like he's just so he's such a, a pretty um personality to have two people be like you're really awesome and then the other person's just like hell yeah i think you're really great as well and i'm going to make sure that you choose the right casket so you marry me and also help my friend because my friend's in trouble please and then Porsche's like yeah okay babe i got you bitch you're fun yeah benedict probably a bubble because who doesn't love <clears throat> that man also david Tenham played him across from Catherine tate and <laughs> awesome fantastic uh another question that uh by the way we send out a newsletter and that has things like bloopers from our videos and stuff in it and it's probably the one-stop shop for all the information about what we've got coming up in our lives and some of the silly things that we've done outside of our own company like um books that we've written and had published uh songs that were posted on our own personal youtube channels um short films and things that we've been a part of uh with other teams and other creators so sign up for our newsletter and you can do that by going to our website sparrowandboyle.com and down the very bottom of the front page there is a sign up to our website 
Also, you could just email us info at sparrowandboil.com. Info at sparrowandboil.com. And that's where you can start some of these videos as well. <clears throat> Man. The, uh, I have someone else asked me a question as well. How was rehearsing this play? Really intense. So, bit of backstory. When we first put on this performance, I was still working full time for Vodafone. So I would work full time during the day, uh, like an eight till five, <clears throat> eight till four. And then once I had finished up at work, I would train back into Upper Hut and I would go straight around to Alexander's place and because it had the, the most space here, this nice big um, garage space. And uh, we would rehearse for five hours. So I'd be learning lines every moment that I kind of got a little bit of a break. And then after work, I would go to Alexander's house and we would rehearse for like five hours. We rehearsed that play for about three weeks, maybe. And then I left Vodafone and two days later we were on a ferry going down to Invercargill what on our way driving to Invercargill to do our first show so it was three weeks of rehearsing as well as working full-time finishing up at work <clears throat> getting on a ferry still learning lines like absolutely I think I was learning lines up until the day of the first performance like we had been I'd done long scripts before, but this was just, I mean, like, it's an hour and a half of doing Shakespeare by yourself. Like, <clears throat> it was just stupid. It's a stupid thing to do. Do it if you want, but I would not recommend. Um, and so, yeah, working full time, rehearsing for five hours every single day, and then you would do, like, eight-hour rehearsals on a Saturday and Sunday, and then finished up at work on a Friday, had two days off to get sorted and ready, packed the caravan, drove the caravan for the first time, onto a ferry, got on the ferry, went down south and drove for three days down to Invercargill to start the first performance of <clears throat> Mary Wise, I think on the Thursday. And that was the most intense rehearsal process I've ever encountered. Because it was just, it's just you and nobody else. And I was driving as well, so it was running lines. <laughs> driving over hills that I'd never been on before <laughs> crying <laughs> awful but then the first performance of it I think it was this is kudos to Alexander because when I was feeling emotionally drained he would go yo you can do this I know that you can you've got this you're smashing it out of the park you just need to concentrate just for a little bit longer and then you'll be fine <clears throat> and then on the day he was like you have it trust yourself you've got it and if you don't have it you can wing it. This is the opportunity for you to work as an individual and as a comedian and as a, a, a Shakespearean actor who's been doing this for years. You can wing it. And then on the day, on the Thursday, for the first time in Chicago, smashed it. And I think it was just the combination of working really, really hard for those three weeks and then a calm and cool and like ready to like know when to push you and know when to push like step back director and on the day it just kind of clicked and then after you know 10 performances of that you can kind of just do whatever you want step outside of yourself and then beyond that was fine but the rehearsal process was awful <laughs> because i was still working full time that's pretty much it i think it was just long days long days and kind of sleepless nights but worth it in the end oh my god what classic roles are on your acting bucket list? Wow. I had never uh, thought of that. Um, there's the daughter from the Jew of Malta, from Marlowe. I'd like to have another crack at Faustus again. That was cool. I want to do it again. Beatrice, of course. Portia again, I would love to do. Lavinia, Kat, you can tell me about that. I really want to play Lavinia. That would be awesome. Um, I would like to be Ophelia. Again, Kat, you can tell me about that. And later on, I would really like to be um, oh, I've got already, uh, Gertrude. Gertrude would be great. I mean, Hamlet would be great, let's be honest. I would love to play Hamlet. I already have all the fencing gear. Yo, hit me up. Because <laughs> um, Laertes plays
playing Laertes was great. To be able to put on my own fencing gear as Laertes was quite powerful. That was great. Um, what else? There's the sister from Tis Pity She's a Whore. That would be intriguing to play. If any of you have heard of the play Tis Pity She's a Whore, that would be quite interesting to be the sister there. Uh, what else? Classic. Well, it depends on whether or not you're talking about classic Shakespeare or not. But yeah, I think those, those are, those are mine. And who I think Desdemona to me would be a, um, oh, some birds. Desdemona would be a challenge to me. I think I'm so used to getting cast as someone who is a bit like snarky or maybe a little bit of the fool or uh, maybe more of someone who is a bit more stoic straight edge like self knowing but I think playing as uh, someone who not feeble but just like a someone who is a bit more shy and timid and something like that I think that would be a real challenge so this one might be a good challenge as well I don't know but yes our next show much Ado About Nothing, starring Alexander Sparrow, next week, Saturday, 3pm, same time. And uh, be on the lookout for videos from Pat Goldsack and also Fred from Featherston and other videos that are available from us online on our YouTube and Facebook. I'm going to go away now and finish my cup of tea and have a wine because it's beer o'clock. It's 4.30, ladies and gentlemen, on our Saturday. So thank you so much for joining me. I've had heaps of fun and I hope that you guys visit our Patreon, visit our website. Have fun, stay safe, stay home. Say hi to your bubble for me. Love you and I miss you. Bye.